Art Museum. Affiliated stations present Escape. All of Fantasy. Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lights out. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Retro Radio Sunday on Weird Darkness. Each week I bring you a show from the golden age of radio, but still in the genre of Weird Darkness. I'll have stories of the macabre and horror, mysteries and crime, and even some dark science fiction. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and if you're already a member of this Weirdo family, please take a moment and invite someone else to listen. And please, leave a rating and review in the podcast app you're listening from. Doing these things helps the show to keep growing. And while you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to connect with me on social media, and more. Coming up, it's an episode from the Humphrey Bogart Theater. It's an episode entitled Dead Man from 1949, where Humphrey Bogart plays a voice from beyond the grave, seeking justice for a crime that seems to have gone unpunished. Now, if you're not familiar with the Humphrey Bogart Theater, it's not surprising. From what I can find, this is the only episode, the pilot episode, ever produced for the show. It'll be obvious it's the pilot episode as you listen, as the announcer even indicates where a commercial would be placed if the show was ever picked up for distribution and syndication. It's too bad the show was never picked up. Having Humphrey Bogart as the star of every episode would definitely have been entertaining and memorable. Humphrey Bogart was an iconic star of the American silver screen, especially in the 1940s, playing classic bad guys and coming late to leading man status in legendary films like The Maltese Falcon, Casablanca, and The African Queen. He also made numerous radio appearances before and after this attempt at his own show. You're about to hear a rarely heard treat. Humphrey Bogart from 1949 in Dead Man. Now, Hold your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Humphrey Bogart. Tonight's author, James M. Cain. Tonight's story, Dead Man. From Hollywood, a new dynamic series based on the work of the great names of the modern short story, presented by the actor-producer Humphrey Bogart. Actor-producer. Well, that's a moniker I'll have to get used to. You know, when an actor turns producer, searching for material becomes one of his main jobs. One of mine is to read stories of all kinds. Adventure, romance, mystery, comedy. Always looking for strong yarns. Well told that will achieve the big result, entertainment. And this is the type we're going to dramatize for you. Speaking as Bogart the actor, I'd like to appear in some of them. This is especially true of the one we're going to bring you tonight by James Kane. Jim's a great student of human nature. That's evident in his novels like The Postman Always Rings Twice... Serenade, Double Indemnity, and The Moth. He doesn't write short fiction often, but in this piece, which appeared in the old American Mercury, you'll find the offbeat qualities that have made him famous. He got the idea for Dead Man one night waiting for a freight train to pass. There were some hobos perched on top of it, and, well, that's our story. But before we start, how about a word from High Averback? In this spot each week, we would have an opening commercial, followed by a short billboard. Now, for the first time on the air, James M. Cain's great short story, Dead Man, with Humphrey Bogart as Larry Knott and William Tracy as Lucky. (laughs) 
Hey, what are we slowing down for? Why does a freight train always slow down 10 miles from nowhere in the middle of the night? Railroad bull coming down the line of Budasov. So let's get off. We're going slow enough to jump? Yeah, but too fast to get back on. Yeah, he's flashing his light now. All right, boys. Pile off. Hit the cinders. Let's go. Okay. Hey, what happened to that kid that was on here? I didn't see him jump. He climbed down in a coal chute. Hey, kid! The bull's Shut coming! Up. You can't hide from this Shut guy! He's sitting in his chute! Okay, okay! I'm giving you guys a break. Are you gonna jump? Come on, Mick. All right. Fall easy and roll when you hit. Try to be a nice guy and they walk all over you. Anybody down that coal chute? All right, wise guy, climb out of that chute. Turn off that flashlight. I'll turn it off, you little punk. Come out. Let go of me, you big ape. Hide out on me, will you? I try to give you a break and you hide out. Oh, my God. Look out. Look out. The bottom of the chute is open. We'll... Oh, we'll fall. You'll go with me. All right, kid. Where are you? Ah, uh, you're not getting away from me. Let me go. Why don't you let me go? You had your chance. Larry Knott ain't losing his job for a punk like you. You'll do a bit in the clink for this. You gotta get me there first. Now, big guy, this might even things up. Kid, put down that spike. I'll put it down. I was picking on people. I wasn't gonna steal your lousy railroad. Now, my... Maybe you let me go. Mister. Hey, mister. Mister! Wake up! Wake up! He's dead! He's dead! <laughs> Got to get back to Los Angeles before morning. See how far on this roadside. 17 miles. You better keep running, kid. You got a long way to go. Where are you? Who is it? It's me, kid. You know where I am. You left me there. Look, I didn't mean it. I, I didn't mean it. No, but you did it. Now you got to run. You gotta run for the rest of your life. Just L.A., that's all. I'll, I'll be safe there, you understand? I'll be safe. You can't beat this, kid. I can, I can. I ate two meals yesterday in the soup kitchen. If I get back in time for breakfast, they'll remember me. Nobody will ever know I left the town. Nobody. Nobody. You'll know it, kid. And I'll know it. We'll always know it. You better run, kid. You can't hurt me. You're a dead man. You're dead. You're dead. Ain't there any bread to put in this slop? Oh, be glad you're living. Move on. I don't know why they're always kicking. That smells good to me. Oh, would you? You must love this grub. Thought you'd be off duty today. Me? Why would I be off? You mean you don't even get Sundays off in this joint? Sunday, wake up. This is Saturday. Saturday? Hey, that's right. It is Saturday. They're hanging signs and big banners all along the main drag for the parade. What kind of parade? The Shriners. Well, you get to see that for free. That ought to be your speed. Yeah, that's me. My name is Lucky. My name is Shorty, but I'm over six feet. Uh, nothing like that with me. I really... Got luck. Yeah? Like what? Like, for instance, getting a hunk of meat in this soup. Ain't no meat in there. But there's gonna be some, ain't there? Shiver plate over quick. Don't let nobody see you. Oh, thanks, Shorty. Okay, Lucky. Don't let them guys see the meat. Back of the hall ain't lighted. Grab a table back there. Sure, sure. I'll eat, I'll eat. You'd better. You'll need strength. You gotta have strength to keep moving. I made it here. I'm all right. Sure. You made sure he remember you, and the day will stick in his mind because of the parade. That's smart, but it isn't enough. Why ain't it enough? You didn't kill another hobo, kid. You killed a cop. Only a railroad bull. 
Bull, but still a cop. They never close the books when a cop gets killed, Lucky. They work all day and all night. They ask questions. I got answers. You better have them. And you better have them fast. You'll have to think on your feet, kid. And you're tired. I gotta get some sleep. Where, though? Where? Sign pointing up the street said Lincoln Park. It's only 6 a.m. I can sleep there. And get picked up for vagrancy? That's bad. They'll bring you in for that and then start on something else. I can hide. Must be a stable or something in a park. I gotta sleep. Take it easy, kid. You're watching. You're walking too fast. Mom, I didn't do anything honest. It was a mistake. You shouldn't have left home, son. I begged you not to go. Now the man is here. Tell him to go away. Tell him I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping too, Lucky. Go away. Leave me alone. No. I want you to get ready for what's coming. Where did you spend last night, kid? In a flop house. Yeah, which one? I didn't pay no attention to the name. It was just a flop house. Where was this flop house at, Lucky? How should I remember? I've never been in L.A. before. I don't know the names of those streets. What did the place look like? Looked like a flop house. You think they'll buy that? What did the place look like, Lucky? What did it look like? Let me go! 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 Hey, what's going on in here? Help! Make him let me go! Be quiet. He won't hurt you. All right, Goliath, put him down. Down! Thanks. Thanks. How'd you get in here? The side door was open. I thought this was the park stable. It's the elephant house at the zoo. What are you doing here? I... I just wanted to sleep, that's all. You're lucky you weren't stepped on in that hay. One of them might have rolled right over on you during the night. During the night? Yeah. Yeah, I was here all night. They might have killed me. I got a good mind to call the cops and turn you in. No, 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 please don't do that. I'm broke. I, I couldn't go anyplace else. Give me a break. If I find a job, I'll be okay. All right. Now get out of here and stay out. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'll get a job. I'll be all right. Job, eh? Why didn't you do that yesterday instead of hopping that freight? They won't know about the freight if I get a job. If a guy killed somebody, the cops wouldn't expect to find him looking for a job. Two hours sleep in there. That wasn't much. It was enough. I'm I'm young, I'm strong. You're running again, kid. You're running again. <laughs> Oh, just a minute, lady. Let me check the air in this rear tire. It looks low. Ah, she's all right now. Thanks, and hurry back. Hello? Hello. What can I do for you? Oh, what's chances I'd get a job around here? If you mean right here in this service station, the chances are nothing flat. Why not? The sign says you're open 24 hours a day. I work 12. My brother-in-law works the other 12. We don't need any help. I, I ain't asking much, and you could both cut down on your hours. Look, brother, I know it's tough, but I got troubles of my own. I'm barely making a living myself. Here, here. Here's two bits for something to eat. That's all the help I can give you. I ain't asking for a handout. I want a job. If my clothes were better, would that change your mind? Even if the morning paper said you'd been elected one of the ten best-dressed men in Hollywood, the answer would still be no. I haven't got enough to do myself. Well, suppose I get better clothes. Will you talk to me again? I'm a registered Democrat. I'll talk to anybody. But I'm not hiring. I'll, I'll be back when I get better clothes. What's your name? It's there right over the station. Hook. Oscar Hook. Thanks, Mr. Hook. Just got an idea I can talk myself into a job. Well, don't waste your time. Here, take the two bits. All right, thanks. I'll work it out for you when I come back. Stop trying to shove me out of my own business. <laughs> Good luck, kid. Thanks. Hi, 
I wondered when you were going to think about that, Lucky. Think about what? The clothes. So they're dirty, so what? Not all clothes get dirty that way. Where'd that coal dust come from? From the freight. What is that proof? Well, don't you know there isn't much coal brought into Southern California? That car may be the only one in six months. And I was killed on it, Lucky. Better think of something else, kid. You better think of something else. I'll get rid of these clothes. I'll, I'll get others. That won't be easy. Lots of people have seen you in those clothes. I told you how cops worked. Coal dust on your clothes, and there was coal dust on mine. I got it all over me, too. And you got no money to buy new duds. I'll get them. I'll go down to the cheap stores. Somebody will trust me. Maybe. But the cops will be looking for somebody with coal dust on his clothes. They'll check the stores. You'll be easy to remember, Lucky. You'll be very easy to remember. I'll pick a small store. They, they can't check them all. They can't check them all. <laughs> In a moment, act two of Dead Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. This, of course, the middle commercial. If you love old-time radio, you'll want to visit our friends at ClassicRadioStore.com who provide all the shows for me to wear. At ClassicRadioStore.com, you'll find thousands of episodes available in pristine, digitally remastered sound. Every episode they offer at ClassicRadioStore.com has been transferred from the master recordings and digitally remastered for superior sound quality. That's why the episodes that you hear on Weird Darkness sound so clean. And the shows at ClassicRadioStore.com are all uncut, unedited, and are delivered to you as they were originally broadcast, including the classic commercials. You can download great shows that'll chill you and thrill you, such as Suspense, the Whistler, Inner Sanctum, Lights Out, and more. There are mystery and crime shows like Sherlock Holmes, Philip Marlowe, Dragnet, and Sam Spade. they got a great collection of old-time science fiction radio shows like X-1 or Dimension X. Plus, there is a ton of comedy and westerns there, too, if you want to relive the shows of yesteryear. All the shows are available to instantly digitally download and the links never expire, so you can order them now and listen to them anytime you'd like. And because you're a listener of Weird Darkness, you can save 20% on any and all radio shows on the website by using the promo code WEIRD at checkout. Just visit ClassicRadioStore.com, select all the radio show packages you want, then at checkout use the promo code WEIRD and save 20% on your whole purchase. That's ClassicRadioStore.com, promo code WEIRD at checkout. After which, now we return to Act Two of James M. Cain's Dead Man, with Humphrey Bogart as Larry Knott and William Tracy as Lucky. Yes, senor. What can I do for you? Mister, will you trust me for a pair of white pants and a shirt? No, no trust. You want credit, you go to a bank. You go out and work. You get money to buy things. Look, lady, I want to work. And I can get a job if I have that outfit. I can start to work Monday morning. All, all I need is white pants and a shirt. I have to pay cash myself. No trust. Don't you understand? This means a job for me. I got to get that outfit. I'll pay you next Saturday as soon as I get paid. Honest. Look. I would like to help you, but I can't do it. Okay, it's your store. I've been out of work a long time. What kind of job are you going to get? Why you need white shirt and pants? Yeah. Maybe he's going to drive an ice cream truck. Huh? No, no it's, it's a gas station. they got a rule. you got to have white clothes before you can work there. They all wear white clothes. Ah, white clothes put the grease in the trucks. Eh. One day you're going to look worse than you do now. Look, what else would I want an outfit like that for? Holy smokes, my own things are better for the road, ain't they? I don't look like I own a yacht, do I? Tell me, where's this gas station you're going to work? Huh? Hollywood. A guy named Oscar Hook owns the place. It's an Acme station. You don't believe me? Call him up and ask him. Hollywood's the other side of town. How'd you get over here? I walked. All the way over from there to get stuff for the job? That's a long walk. 
Why'd you pick my store? I asked half a dozen places. Somebody's got to have a heart. When a young man doesn't go to school or to work, he's getting into trouble. What size you wear? Fifteen shirt, twenty-eight waist on the pants. Ah, all right, all right. Go into the back room, take off your clothes. I'll bring this stuff. Thanks. He'll need shoes, too. His are worn out. Here. See, see. Maybe he's hungry, too. Put a dollar in the pants. Well, why not fifty dollars? Make him a full partner in this store. Go, go, go. Uh, here's your things. You want to wrap up the old ones? No. No, throw them away. You, uh, you got pretty dirty. You're covered with black. Uh, yeah, I did some work uh, yesterday. I cleaned out a big fireplace in the restaurant for something to eat. Uh, you all ready now? Yeah, yeah, these are swell. I fix up a bill for you. Here you are. Nine dollars, 84 cents. Yes, yeah, and, and one dollar service charge. Service charge? What kind of... All right, okay. Never mind the service charge. Sure, sure. Forget the service charge. There's a tag or something in his pocket here. It's... Oh, it's... It's a dollar. Ah, that's all right. You find it, you keep it. It's your lucky day, huh? Yeah. Yeah, my lucky day. Here, yeah, mamacita. You burn the old clothes with the papers, huh? Sure, sure. Goodbye, boy. We pray for you. Goodbye, and, and thanks. Thanks a lot. Mm. Adios. Made it, didn't you, Lucky? That was neat. I'm all right now. I'm clear. Yeah, but what about the old clothes? I left them. I'm rid of them. Sure, but somebody else has them now. That's the evidence, kid. He noticed the dirt. They're going to burn them. That's what they said. You won't see them do it, though. How are you going to know? Uh, I'll go back. I'll go back and get them. No, you can't. That'd look funny. You said you didn't want them. I, I, I changed my mind. I'll burn them myself. Where? You got a private apartment? Some place where you can turn a key? Look kind of funny building a fire in an empty lot to burn clothes. Besides, they might think he was faking about the job. They'll burn them. They said so. Sure. They'll burn them. Walk a little faster, kid. Walk a little faster, kid. Well, you're persistent, kid. I'll say that for you. I went to a lot of trouble to get these clothes. There must be some way you can use me. Kid, look. Look at the dough in this cash box. Eleven bucks, and that's for two families to feed. The night shift won't bring that. It won't slice any thinner. Well, I guess you're right. Say, why don't you hit north? This town's dead right now. You could earn a living picking fruit up there. Yeah, it'd be great in the road in this white outfit. I can get you a ride in a line haul truck. Guy I know drives that route tonight. He'll leave about seven o'clock. They like company to keep him awake. But that means you have to stay awake, too. You look tired. Maybe you got a place I could lay down until then. Not here. You got any dough? A buck. There's a cheap hotel a few blocks up. Sack in there and sleep till just before seven. Okay, I'll see you later. No job after all, huh, Lucky? Now you gotta run for it. Get out of town. They can't tag me. I got a head start now. Don't see how you figure that. There's cops up north, too. Already there, waiting. Guys on the road get picked up all the time. I look all right. They'll pass sure. me. Sure. You traded black clothes for white ones. The cops will know about that when you don't show up to give the storekeeper his dough. If I stay here, they'll pick me up easier. I gotta go. I gotta take the chance. Sure. That's the only chance you got. Run. Get some sleep. Then run. <laughs> Well, yeah, bud. I want a room. You can call me at 6.30 tonight. That's half a buck. Sign this card. What's the matter, bud? You forget your name? No. No, I just haven't written in a long time. I haven't even heard anybody say it. Except for my nickname. You can't take nicknames. Sometimes the cops come by. They want to see the list. Cops! 
What for? Who knows? They gotta look like they're doing some kind of work, don't they? The matter, cops worry you? No, no. Why should they? Well, it's something you know better than me. Yeah. Is your change from the buck and your key? Okay. That's my name. Ben Fuller. Where's the room? Straight down the hall, room 13. Ain't superstitious, eh? No. Going down to the church to help decorate for tomorrow. You want to come? No! You used to go always. I'm not going anymore. I'm sick of this place. I'm sick and tired. You shouldn't feel like that. You have a nice home and a nice job. Yeah, working in the hardware store in a hick town. I want to go places and see things. I want to be somebody. You are somebody, Ben. You've got friendship and respect. You won't always work for somebody else. You'll build something of your own someday. You bet I will. But it won't be here. Someday I'll go away. Someday I'll live in a big city where things happen. And I'll have everything I want. I want you to have everything, son. I want to help you. Won't you come with me? No, I told you, no! All right, son. All right. Hello, Lucky. <laughs> No, no, wait, Mom. Wait, I'll come with you. Too late, Lucky. You can't go now. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't. You never wanted to hurt anybody, but you did. Even your mother. That's a lie. Is it, Lucky? Maybe it is. Maybe she deserved it, expecting a smart kid like you to run away in a dead little town. It wasn't dead. It was a good town. We had a basketball team and a band that played in the park in the summer and in a lake where we could swim. Yeah, but that was for kids, not for a man. Father wasted his life there, too, didn't he? No, he didn't. He was the best barber in town. Everybody loved him. Everybody. That wasn't good enough for you, though. What did you want, Lucky? I don't know. I... What's that noise? It's pretty plain. Listen to it. What are they, what are they doing? What are they building? A gallows, Lucky. That's where they're going to hang you. You're not going to see it? I'll kill you, not I'll kill you. You already did. You can't do it again. You can't get rid of me. I, I'll kill you. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Oh. oh, just a minute. I'd hate to have you for a customer at night, bud. What are you doing, throwing a fit? I was dreaming, that's all. Dreams like that you can have. Come on, it's 6.30. Ain't you going to catch a truck or something? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I'll check out right away. I'm getting a ride north. Book says you're going north to pick fruit. Is that right? Only till I get enough dough to buy a new suit and a train ticket home. I want to go right back. Sure. Can't go back on the bum. I never should have left. Yeah, most guys I carry feel that way. But they never know till they try. Some of them start back too late. What do you mean? Ah, health is gone or they're getting a one-way jam. Hey, uh, I got to make a stop here for a few minutes, you mind? We ain't even out of town. I know, but I got to stop here. What are you stopping here for in the police station? What's the idea? Cops after you for something? No, no, of course not. Well, what are you so jumpy for? Well, they pick you up for vagrancy or hitchhiking or something. Yeah, relax. They don't bother anybody. They're glad to see you go. Well, it just seemed a funny place to stop, that's all. Well, the police station ain't the only place on the block. I'm just going in that cafe across the street for a cup of java. This is a long haul, and I'm broke, and I got a tab in there. I'd uh, buy you a cup of coffee, only, well, it's... <laughs> When it's on credit, it's kind of rubbing it in to bring a guest. I'll wait. Go ahead. Hey, uh, there's a mission house just the other side of the police station. You can get coffee in there for nothing. No, I'll, I'll wait. I uh, don't blame you. They play music in the place, and it's murder. Oh, uh, there's an evening paper on the shelf behind the seat if you want to look at it while I'm gone. 
You can turn on the cab light. Paper. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. Thanks. What are you looking for, Lucky? What? I'm just looking at the paper, that's all. I'm not a very important guy. Maybe it wouldn't be on the front page. Ah, there it is, Lucky. Page three. L. R. Not railroad man killed. Read it, kid. The decapitated body of L. R. Not railroad detective assigned to a northbound freight was found early this morning on a track about 15 miles north of Los Angeles. It is believed he lost his balance while passing another train and fell beneath the wheels. They don't know. They don't know. No, kid. Only you and I know. You can't know. You can't know anything. You're a dead man. You got no head in your body. You can't talk. You're my imagination, that's all. You mean conscience, don't you? Get away. You can't come back now. You're dead. You don't know anything. I'm free. I'm free. You don't know anything. You're all right, Lucky. I don't know. You've beaten the law, Lucky. They can't catch you. Nobody knows now. Nobody but you. You win, don't you, kid? I'm a dead man. You win, don't you, kid? I'm a dead man. You win, don't you, kid? I'm a dead man. Well, we can hit the road now. We are... Hey, what's the matter? You sick or something? No. No, I'm all right. Well, if you are, you can climb up on the shelf and lay down. I changed my mind. I'm not going with you. Thanks, anyhow. Suit yourself, kid. So long, mister. So long, mister. Precinct House, Sergeant Jameson. Yeah, okay, Joe. Make out a report on it. Now, what can I do for you, boy? I... I want to give myself up. What'd you do, kid? Steal something? Or are you trying to get a free ride home? No. I... I killed a man. When did it happen? Last night. Where? On the railroad tracks going north. It was like this. Wait a minute, kid. Wait till I get a card. Okay, what's your name? Fuller. Ben Fuller. No middle name? They call me Lucky. Lucky, huh? Like in good luck? Yes. Lucky. Like in good luck. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart will be back with you in just a moment. But first, here you would have a closing commercial. After which, here again is Humphrey Bogart. Next week, a story by the big fellow himself, Ernest Hemingway. And in weeks to come, other great yarns by John P. Marquand, Stephen Vincent Benet, John O'Hara, Louis Bromfield, Christopher Morley, James Thurber, James Gould Cousins, Ben Heck, Irvin Cobb, Thomas Wolfe, and other great names published in the Charles Grayson anthology, Stories for Men. Tonight's story was adopted for radio by Joel Mercott. The music composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. D. Engelbach, directed and produced for Santana Productions. 
Until next week when we meet again, good night. Be with us again next week at the same time when Humphrey Bogart will return to present another great short story. This time by one of the foremost men of contemporary fiction, Ernest Hemingway. This is High Aberback speaking. Thanks for listening to this week's retro radio episode of Weird Darkness. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves old-time radio and leave a rating and review in the podcast app you listen from to help spread the word about Weird Darkness and Retro Radio Sunday. And a huge thanks to our friends at ClassicRadioStore.com for generously providing the old-time radio shows you hear on Weird Darkness Retro Radio Sunday. Remember, you can save 20% on all of the ClassicRadioStore.com shows by using the promo code WEIRD at checkout. The rest of the week, I narrate new stories of the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, and mysteries, so be sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already done so. I upload episodes seven days a week. You can email me anytime and find all of my social media links on the contact page at WeirdDarkness.com. Also on the website, you can listen to free audiobooks that I've narrated, shop the Weird Darkness store, sign up for the newsletter to win monthly prizes, and more. Weird Darkness is a production and trademark of Marlar House Productions. Copyright Weird Darkness. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness.